and, and get in. So first and foremost, action equals reward. These are my action plans, okay? Basically, um, the one key thing that I, I think is the major, major difference between or what's going to propel you forward from where you are right now um, you know, to the success that you want to achieve is the action that you're going to take. And I think that if you're all honest and you all have a look at your business, um, you know, you'll be able to say where you are right now in your business is relatively um, or, or it will relatively equal to the action that you're currently taking in your business. OK, now, last week I was speaking to um, a, a, a friend that I met basically at a um, at a, 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 an event, a property event, and although he is part time in his business, he's absolutely killing it. He's got something like fifteen properties. Okay, now you know I was I, I was quite I wanted him to actually come on the webinar and and, and have a little chat, um, but he's at another property event tonight. And one of the reasons why he's been able to get those properties is because of the action he takes. Like I said, he's at another property event tonight. He goes to property events every night, albeit okay. Um, you know he works full time. But, you know, he has 15 properties. And uh, I think, like I said, action is key. And that's no matter what you do in life, you know, whether it's your own business, whether it's your property business, whether you're going to work, you know, you'll be rewarded from the actions, from the amount of actions that you, you, you take. Okay, so let's have a look. Every day, without fail, do something for your business. Okay, this is rule number one, all right? Every day without fail, even if you've been working all day for someone else from seven o'clock in the morning, you know, and I know how that feels sometimes. You're just knackered, you're totally wiped out, you get home and you just think you wanna put the kettle on and put your feet up, okay? Trust me, think about your business, do something for your business because the good thing about by doing that is you're going to get yourself into good habits, okay? Like I said, Every day, do something for your business. Now, if you've got an action plan, even better, okay? So that will tell you exactly what you should be doing every day for your business, all right? But if you are part-time in your business and you are going out to work and you do get home and you're totally tired, send some emails out, you know, post something on Facebook, um, you know, write up something to do with your plan, do something, okay? Because only by doing something in your business will you start to move closer to where you want to get to. Okay, guys? Um, rule number two. Now, one of my things that I say to you guys is you've got to get out there and you've got to network, yeah? Network equals net worth. Or be it on the screen, I've got network equals network. Well, it does, doesn't it? But also it equals net worth, okay? So um, sometimes going out and you know, going out to networking events and meeting different people, and it can seem daunting, okay? Like I said, I'm not uh, the most sociable when I go out to networking events, but I know I'm there for a reason. I'm going out to network, I'm going out to try and meet another contact. Um, so I'm collecting business cards, and then it's okay collecting piles of business cards, okay? The problem is, what are you going to do with them, okay? You must make sure that those business cards potentially could be your next business partner, could be the next person that you're going to meet who's going to invest in your product or invest in your property business, okay? So therefore, you know, you've got to make sure that you've got some sort of um, order, some sort of database, some way that you can keep in contact with all of the people that you're meeting, okay, guys? Now, uh, at one of our upcoming events, we are going to be going through basically uh, some online platforms that I use um, basically to try and manage the database and try and manage the contact with people, okay, making sure that we stay in touch with them as much as possible, okay? And then thirdly, when it comes to the action side of things is you've got to set yourself business targets, stroke goals with a timeline attached, Okay, now again, these are the stepping stones to, to, to move you towards success. Okay, guys, what do I mean by this? I mean, you, you, every, in your business, and remember, we're talking about your property business here, okay? Whether that's, your, whether, whether that's a building, whether that's rent to rent, you know, whether that's um, development, whatever it is, you've got to have some realistic goals that you are, are, are moving towards every day. Okay, because every day you take that bit of action, it should be moving you towards the success that you want to achieve in your business. Okay, without those goals, then 
You know, you're not going to know whether or not you're moving forward, whether you're going backwards, whether you're standing still, and it won't drive you. Okay, it won't give you nothing to aim for. So, um, I know speaking to a couple of you last weekend, I kind of got the feeling that you, if you did have goals, you weren't really having a look at them sort of every day and, and, and focusing on them and seeing whether or not you're actually doing anything to achieve them. Because I, I, I just think if you don't look at your goals at, on, a, on a regular basis and it's been proven that those that look at their goals every day, okay, absolutely smash it and get to their goals something like five times faster than those that look at their goals on a monthly basis, okay? Even, even shorter than that, actually, all right? So if you pick your goals up, have them at the end of the bed, okay? Read them in the morning, read them before you go to night, and just make sure that you've done something every day to get you closer to where you want to get to. Okay, guys? Very, very important. That's the action that we need to take. Okay? I'm just going to have a look at this. Uh... Excellent. Hema says, yes, I read. Uh, I read that somewhere too. Good. <laughs> Backing me up there, Hema. I like it. Okay. Excellent. So they're the action steps, okay? They're the action rules. Like I said, in my office, I make sure that I'm doing everything, something every day, um, you know, and everything that we're doing is for a purpose. It's moving us towards where we want to get to, okay? Okay. Then the next set of rules, okay? Next set of rules we've got, okay? For those of you that are listening that are new, um, uh, you should know some of this stuff as well anyway, because uh, we should have been through it. But for those of you that are listening that, uh, um, excellent, got it. Um, for those of you that um, have been here for a while, you should be able to read these rules off like the back of your hand or off the back of your hand. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Okay, so these are the sourcing rules, okay? Now, no matter what we're doing in our property business, no matter what strategy we are using, no matter what um, uh, business model we are using, we are going to have to source property, all right? We, 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 that's what it's all about. We're gonna have to source property. When sourcing property, we need to stick to these rules, okay, guys? These, will, these are the framework that you need to stick to, okay? First and foremost, location, location, location. All right, choose your location. We've been through this so many times. Choose your location. Make sure that um, you understand why you're choosing that location and definitely not because it's cheap, okay? And even if, like Sean, for instance, I know you're, um, you're doing some development work and building work for, for others, okay? Again, choose a location where you know you're gonna get paid, all right? If you're gonna be doing work for other people, make sure that the location that you choose to do your work in is a good location. People can afford you, okay? It's easy for you to get to, transport transport wise, you know. Okay, all this is very very important. All right, guys. Okay, know your clients. All right, make sure you know who you're working with. Okay, make sure um, you know your end client. Make sure you know if you're developing, you know who's moving into that property. Okay, um, if you're going to be renting it out, if you're going to rent out your property, uh, like Ross. You know, I know you're renting out your properties. We had a chat about people moving into your properties this week. Make sure that as much as you can, you know, the rooms are done out. Um, uh, that's going to appeal to your target audience. Okay, so you must know your client. Okay, do your numbers, guys. All right, very, very important. You got to do your numbers, whether you're purchasing, um, whether you're whether you're um, doing your your rent to rent, whether you're doing development. It doesn't matter. Numbers don't lie. Okay, and this is one of the rules early on in my career. All right, that for one reason or another I kept breaking. Okay, just because I I kept falling in love with properties and I kept saying, you know, oh this is so nice. It just looks gorgeous. I really want to do this deal, and then. I'd add up the numbers and they didn't work and then I'd try and play about with the numbers to try and make them work. And then I'd say, oh yeah, this, this will work, jump involved. And then later on, you know, three, four, five months later, end up breaking even, you know, hard work, gray hairs, load of stress for zero profit. Okay guys, so key is you got to make sure you do your numbers, all right? Or get gray hairs quicker. 
<laughs> okay, potential for capital growth, all right? Does your property have potential for capital growth? Okay, hi Ricardo, just joining us. Okay, so does your, does your property have potential for capital growth? Um, now, at the weekend, I just done a weekend and, and we spoke about this. Now, if you're like, I operate in some areas that aren't great for uh, capital growth, just because the area is already kind of like, you know, it's already very well established, all right? But that doesn't mean that you don't move forward with the property. It just means that you understand that you're not calculating capital growth in any of your numbers, okay? So therefore, your model and the strategy that you're using have to take that into consideration, okay, guys? If it does have potential for capital growth, that's great, it's a plus. Um, but if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world, but you just gotta make sure you understand that, okay? And you've got um, uh, better plans in place to take care of, this, of, of, of the fact that you're not gonna be gaining any capital growth um, in the short term. I'm pretty sure in the long term, you know, most of the UK at some stage should um, uh, have that growth within your numbers, okay. Okay, exit strategy. Make sure you know your exit strategy, guys. Okay, um, you know, do not get into a property thinking, yeah, you know, we're going to be here for three months and or four months and sell it at the end. You've got to have a plan B as well. Always very important, especially in this environment, guys. I can't stress enough. At this moment in time, we are in a very, very, uh, um, I won't use the word sticky environment. Okay. A great environment for people like us who are looking to get into the market all right we've got to make sure that we use this moment in time to our to our benefit okay i've been out again today i've been out with agents again today i've been discussing things non-stop on the phone and it's just more and more of the same guys okay um you know the market is stagnant the market is still and there are people out there that you know we can basically help all right guys so make sure we've got an exit strategy in mind um, whether that's long term, you know, it can be like taking on a property for seven years, fine. Just make sure you've defined your exit strategy. Okay, potential to add value. Okay, um, obviously this was this is one that I'm always looking for. Okay, this is probably more important to me than um, potential for capital growth. Okay, I'm always looking, what can we do here? Where can we add value? Especially in a market like what we're at at the moment. Okay, because with the market being stagnant, all right, if we ain't adding capital growth and we're just thinking we're going to go in there, buy the property and be able to flip it straight away, then probably, unless we get that property at auction or we get it at some unbelievable price um, below market value, then I can't see how you're going to be able to sell that property for more. Okay, so I'm always looking for what is the potential to add value to this property. Okay, guys, welcome if you're just joining us, guys, anyone who's um, just joining us now, uh, welcome in. Okay. Always buy below market value, okay, using contracts. All right, guys. Now, uh, again, this one here. When I talk about buying below market value, all right, it's a little bit of a, a, a you, you have to think about this one because certainly in London, you're not always going to get property below the market value. But what I'm talking about is the value that you put on the property, okay? And I've, I've discussed this a couple of times. If the state agents may have a property on the market, let's just say £500,000, yeah, just as a round number, just to, just, just to work with a number. Now, if you can see that that property is in your area and you know that you may be able to get uh, two properties from that, uh, uh, you know, two converted flats or three converted flats, so therefore to you, that property may be worth more money, okay? It may be worth 550 because you know, you know, your exit, the property could be worth a million pounds to you. All right. Now, albeit someone going in looking at that property, maybe like a, a single family, a, a single family, they're looking at the property again. Well, it's worth five, five hundred thousand because that's what the estate agents are saying. All right. So you may offer more than the asking price, but in your in your view, it's still below market value because you've got a different plan. OK, so keep that in mind. All right, guys. Um, you know, I say always offer below market value. That doesn't mean it's 500,000, I've got to get it below. It means offer market value to what you value it at and what your numbers are coming out at. Okay, guys? So 
they're the golden rules around um, property sourcing. Now, like I said, with those rules, you can use them in all areas of your business as well. Okay, now whether you're sourcing property just to buy, whether you're sourcing property on a rent to rent basis, every area of the property business, you need to stick with these rules and make sure you tick up all the boxes. And if for any reason, one of them are throwing you out, okay, then just have a think about it and double check um, that it still fits into your strategy and what you want to do, okay? But the one that you never, ever, ever break is the numbers, okay? If the numbers are throwing you out, walk away, <laughs> okay? Walk away. Okay, excellent. So the last um, part of the rules then, okay, or, or, or obviously one of the other rules that I'm looking always to do is to buy low, sell high. Now, again, this just comes back to buying um, you know potential to add value and buying below market uh, buying below the market price all right so buy low sell high if and, and, and obviously that's how we're going to make money and just give me a thumbs up guys if we are here to make money in the property market yeah give me a thumbs up all those guys that are listening right now excellent excellent yeah yeah I thought so I thought that's why we're here tonight we're here to make some money so in property, it's not the stocks and shares where we can't really short um, property. So we're looking to buy low, add value, and sell high, okay? Or rent it out and make some money on, in, on, on a monthly basis. Okay, guys, excellent. Okay, let's just have a look at some of your comments coming through. <laughs> okay, excellent, thumbs up. Okay. Okay, so then the last part of the rules, okay, like I said, we, we, we've got three sections to the rules, okay, those of you that are coming in late, you've missed a couple of the sections, okay, so the first section was um, the rules around taking action, okay, um, you know, making sure that uh, we're taking action, making sure every day we're doing something in our business to move us forward towards our, our, our goals, okay, making sure that when we do take that action, the people we're meeting, we're staying in contact with, because they are potentially our next joint venture partners, our next investors, our next, um, you know, uh, uh, money. Our, our, could be the next bank, guys. You know, I'd done, a, I'd done a, a property presentation the other day. I was sitting next to on one of the panels next to a, um, uh independent uh, uh, um, trustee for, for, for a private lender. And we went away. Next day we met up. We had some coffee. And now I may use him uh, in the future as one of my finance guys. OK, so you never know who you're going to be sitting next to and who you're going to be talking to in these network events. All right, guys. OK, so the eight golden rules for turning your property journey into a business. Now, like I said, guys, you know, when I first started out, you know, it was easy. I was I was a one man band. I was going out there and, um, you know, just buying property, thinking about myself and just thinking about benefiting for myself. OK, the minute you want to turn it into a business, you want to start doing stuff with other people. All of a sudden, you know, you want you want to take on other people's money. You have to seriously start thinking about how you're going to handle that. OK, there's certain rules that you must stick by. OK, um, and and those rules are as follows. OK. First and foremost, for your business, you must have a vision and a mission, okay? Very, very important. You are the CEO, okay? You set the vision and you set the mission, okay? Let's just, uh, let's go through this. So you set the vision and set the mission, okay? Um, you need to have a mission and a clear sense of purpose to what it is you are trying to achieve. You need to set clear goals and timelines. Be responsible, You're, you are responsible, make sure, yeah, for all that goes on within your company. Remember, you are the CEO, okay? You gotta set, those, set the clear timelines as well and push towards um, your goal, guys, okay? Make sure that mission means something to you. Like, look, we've been over this before. Make sure, okay, that, you know, you get a tingle inside of you, you know, that, Every time you, you think about it, you know, it drives you, okay? This is your reason why as well, okay? Built in here. Okay, golden rule number two. You must build great relationships in your property business, okay? It's, I, can't, I can't stress this enough, guys, okay? Your relationships in your business will literally, you know, be the results and be the money in the bank in two years time will all be down to the relationships you have within your business okay and 
you know, speaking to some of you, I understand, you know, it's, it's, you're going through challenges, you know, you're going through typical early stage business challenges, all right? But that's what happens. The only way you're gonna get over them is by taking action, okay? And getting out there, meeting the right people who can help you overcome those challenges. Okay, guys? Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay, golden rule number three. Okay, follow a business model and implement the systems and procedures. Okay, you must do this, guys. Okay, um, now these can be sourcing property or, or these systems should include. Okay, you should have a system in place for how you source property, how you analyze deals. Okay, your client communication. All right, so the people you meet, you know, do they go into a database? Do you email them like, you know, the next day? Do you invite them for a coffee? Do you meet them? Okay, you should have a system in place for this. If you don't, you need to put start thinking about putting one in place, okay? And I'm not talking about some big magical system. I'm talking about a three-step plan or a four-step plan to how you deal with each one of these um, parts of your business, okay? So client communication, project management, and refurbishment. Now, those of you that haven't met Sean yet, you'll, you'll, you'll get to meet him. I know he's on the webinar. You know, he deals with um, uh, pro project management, refurbishment, and all, all, all sorts of building stuff. So, you know, he's a good member of the, uh, of, the, of the guys to have on board. And I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more about this area as well in the future. Okay, so um, obviously, lettings management, all right? Um, those of you that are doing your rent to rent, you've got to have your lettings uh, procedures in place, okay? And that goes right from, uh, <laughs> Sean, top builders, <laughs> excellent. Okay, um, that goes, yeah, so your lettings management procedures, that goes right from uh, Ricardo and Ross, you know, you guys will, will, will know about this, goes from putting your first ad in the newspaper or in, you know, online, right the way through to, um, signing the contract and and collecting the deposit you know you've got to have a procedure in place guys otherwise you're going to just be running around running around pulling your hair out all right now if you don't have a procedure in place at this moment in time don't worry about it okay just ask me okay because i've got procedures in, in in place for every aspect of my business all right some very simple steps, okay? And um, I can fire them over to you and get, 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 get them in place, okay? And then you can add um, or, or use however you want, okay? Because obviously they're my procedures. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna wanna use all of them in the same way that I do. Okay. Okay, golden rule number four, seek guidance. Okay, seek guidance and mentorship. I'm pleased to say all of you guys are um, on the mentoring uh, program, so that's great. Um, so you're, you're you're doing the right you're doing the right thing. But also, there's going to be areas, um, you know, maybe areas outside where you're out and you're meeting other people. Um, you know, people who, let's say, in some networking events and stuff like that. You know, you're going to meet some experienced people out there. You know, get their business card, grab them for a coffee, get as much knowledge as you can out of these people. Okay, I still do it today. I go out. Um, Miriam asked me a question the other day. You know, how many networking events do I go out? to my answer is as many as I can okay if I'm not with the kids or I'm not in the office I try and get out um, to some sort of networking event and not just property network events guys okay I do a lot of business events now okay stuff outside of the property scene all right where you can go and meet other people who are experts in their field and then you're bringing the expertise from a property side of things, all right? So, um, you know, get out there, meet other people who are experienced in different areas of property and in business, okay? And just make those relationships, okay? Okay, the winning attitude. Golden rule number five, okay? You gotta have a kick-ass attitude, all right, guys? You know, if things aren't going right, don't worry about it. You've got to have the determination. You've got to be optimistic. My favorite tune, um, well, one of my favorite tunes in the whole wide world is The Sounds of Blackness, Optimistic. You know, keep your head to the sky, all right? Um, if you don't know it, Google it. When we're finished, um, go on YouTube and listen to it, record it, put it in your iPhone, do whatever. 
I don't make any money for recommending them, but what a tune, all right? Um, share my age again as well. Okay, there will inevitably be, be many ups and downs throughout your business life, but your attitude towards them will make the difference, okay? It will make you or break you. Okay, guys, um, I've got that record, excellent. No need to download it then, okay? Um, yeah, your attitude is gonna make you or break you guys, all right? Um, you know, I can so many examples of of of, of this. Uh, you know, I'm sure if you look in your career, you know, your working career, you'll see times when just having a bit of a bad attitude got you kind of like pegged down, got you knocked off. Maybe whether it be a promotion or whether it be something that you feel you know you would write for. Maybe you showed a little bit of bad attitude at times. I know certainly in my football career, I can look at one moment in time um, in particular where I would say, you know, in 13 years of playing professional football, I would say I was close to probably having the best attitude at every club I ever went to for probably 12 years of those 13. OK, and in the one time that I kind of showed a bad attitude, you know, and when I say a bad attitude, I just fell out with the manager and done things that were totally out of my um, out of my character. And uh, and that one time just with one manager, I remember after speaking to other managers trying to leave and go to another football club, they'd all heard about what had happened with this one manager. So 12 years of my attitude, 12 years of going out, being the first one in, working hard, doing all the hard graft, staying out on the football pitch, you know, when everyone else was going home, um, you know, those 12 years had all been wiped out by probably two or three um, uh, times in one season that I showed a bad attitude. Okay, guys? So... That was my lesson, that no matter what is happening, if you want to show a bad attitude, lock yourself in your bathroom, scream at the mirror where no one else can see you, and then go out there, smile, and, you know, don't get me wrong, you've got to say what it is, you know, if you don't agree with something, I'm not saying don't, you know, you've got to say whatever, you know, you've got to stand your ground, but just have a good attitude, guys, okay? Because you don't want other people to knock you down and you'd be tagged with, um, you know, oh, they've got a bad attitude, I don't want to do business with them, okay? That's right. Only takes one mistake. Okay. Only takes one mistake, and um, and before you know it, you know everyone's uh, everyone's pinning you. Okay. So very very important, guys. Okay. Great paperwork and accounting. Okay. I love this one because this used to be my worst one ever. I'm still not the best at it, but I've got some really good people in place who take care of this stuff for me. Okay. So. Um, if this isn't your uh, ideal set skill, don't worry about it. Just get other people to do it for you, okay? Every business is set up to achieve one main outcome for the owners. That is profit, okay? If you don't have good paperwork, you don't have good accounting, you ain't going to know if you're making profit, all right, guys? Very, very important. You may have money coming in, and you might think, yeah, yeah, we've got loads of money coming in, we've got loads of money coming in, but you, it only takes one massive big outgoing, and all that money's gone. Okay, so make sure, all right, guys, that um, you know you you you've got good accounting, good paperwork. Okay, the main outcome should be to achieve a profit at the end of the project um, or the life of the business. Okay, this can only be tracked by good accounting and organisation. And um, if Miriam is on the line, I would expect you to give me a big thumbs up. Wouldn't you agree, Miriam? Yep. Excellent. Yes, Miriam is like, yep, yeah, that's true. There you go. All right. If anyone needs a good accountant, Miriam is fantastic. Um, although I haven't used her personally, okay? But she's a fantastic lady. Aren't you, Miriam? <laughs> okay. Yes, she gives me a thumbs up for that as well. Excellent. Okay. Um, let's... Okay, so golden rule number seven. Okay, partner with or acquire other businesses. Okay, now at this stage, guys, you guys are probably in uh, the early stages of your 
um, business. So to, to acquire other businesses would probably be a little bit too early for you guys, all right? But certainly partner with other people, other businesses, okay? Like I said before, once your business is successful and you have a proven business model, you should now be in a position to do more, okay? So basically, as you grow, and some of you now, actually, you, you know, you're speaking about doing some development projects, doing some refurbishment projects, okay? You should be thinking about getting other people involved in your business, okay? Now, whether that's through um, investment or whether that's just through, um, you know, maybe like a builder who wants to do a joint venture with you, okay? You should be thinking about partnering with other people. This is the number one way to make your business grow tenfold very very quickly all right this is leverage guys okay so um you know in order to grow quickly you should look to partner with other successful people businesses that complement your abilities and your work ethic okay now remember guys make sure these are successful people or businesses okay because it's one thing partnering with someone but you know you want them to add value okay um you know, you want them to, and when I say successful, they could be successful in their own right, you know, in their own business and be coming on board as a JV partner with regards to money, but, you know, they could bring some good knowledge to the table, okay? So surround yourself with good, successful people, knowledgeable people, and um, and look to, or think about looking to partner um, with people in the future. And I've, I've, I've told you all before, guys, I'm looking to partner with all you guys, you know, as soon as you guys get to a certain level or you think you've got interesting deals, um, you know, by all means, you know, send them over. Let's have a chat about them because one of my goals, part of my business plan um, going forward and in the future is really to be doing a lot more JVing and partnering um, uh, with other um, investors or, or, or I shouldn't call you guys investors, for me to come on board more as the investor and um, and and you guys to be the more the developer or property investor okay so look to partner with other people guys okay trust in yourself and your business plan okay golden rule number eight all right you must trust in yourself guys there can only be one ceo in your business once you have made a decision to move forward, you must trust in your own judgment and don't listen to the critics that will be there hoping you fail. All right, guys, like I said, for those of you um, that have already got business partners, very important that, albeit, okay, everybody is important within your business, ultimately, like any business, okay, there can only be one CEO, okay? That's the person who, you know, leads the way, who makes the decision and says, right, this is, makes the final decision. Okay, guys? So make sure if you are partnering with other people, all right, that you've established who that is, okay? And that, yes, you are going to be listening to other people's views and you, everyone's got a, a, a say, okay? But ultimately, if someone isn't making the decision, then you're not going to move your business forward and you'll be talking, talking, talking ideas all day long and not making decisive decisions, okay? Now... That being said, you've got to have trust in yourself, guys, all right? Trust yourself, the business will work, you know, the plan will work. It, it, if it doesn't work, you know, at, uh, just straight away, you've got to stay out there, you've got to keep digging, all right, guys? The property business, I can tell you this now, all right, is just about taking action every day, all right? Doing something every day, because I've always said, guys, you've got to give yourself six to 12 months to make money in property, all right? Now, when I say make money, I mean create that income that is going to replace your, uh, you know, your current income or your work income, okay? You've got to give yourself six to 12 months. Now, yes, you know, some of you are running and, 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 and doing things within two months, three months, four months, but to get yourself stable, doing things consistently, okay, on a consistent good manner yeah give yourself six to twelve months but that doesn't mean oh Cole said six to twelve months so I'm gonna sit back and wait six to twelve months and then it's gonna happen no what I'm saying is working every day doing something small in your business for six to twelve months okay when you do that then I can promise you you'll look back at the end of the year and you go oh wow you know look at our turnover look what we're achieving Okay, this is not a short term fix. Property is not for the get rich quick guys. Okay, property is for the guys that are in this for the long term. 
okay? Over a period of time, and you're gonna do things, um, you know, the same things over and over again, making sure that they're taking you forward and moving you forward. Okay, guys? So that's the golden rule number eight, okay? That really sums up um, uh, the, the, the rules that, the reason I wanted to do this today was because I was looking and saying, right, I want to bring all of the different kind of rules that I stick to as a business and within my business um, together, okay? So we've got the three different rules. We've got the action rules, okay? So the rules that you should be taking action within your business, okay? We've got the sourcing rules, so the property sourcing rules, making sure that you stay within those rules when you're looking at um, bringing on board a property, whether that's a property to do up, whether that's a property to do up for somebody else, okay? Or whether that's a property that you're gonna be renting over a period of time, whether that's a property that you're gonna be doing your lease purchase option strategy on, um, it doesn't matter. You've gotta look at those rules and make sure that you're not breaking any of those rules, okay guys? And then, at the end there, we just spoke about the eight golden rules, which are really your business rules, okay? These are the rules that, again, they really frame, put everything into the frame, okay? That's, they, they surround everything within your, um, with, that you're doing within your business, okay, guys? So that's um, the rules, and that's the, uh, the, the training on that side of things for today. I'm gonna um, just pause the uh, recording there, so anyone, um, uh, listening who's going to be listening to this uh, later on I'm just going to pause you there so thank you very much for listening to this okay and I'm gonna open it up now to you guys all right um, to see you know where you are right now if you've got any questions with regards to um, you know the action you've been taking over the last couple of weeks and um, and and anything that we just discussed with regards to the rules, okay? So I'm just going to um, open it up to you guys and 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 you know let you ask those questions. <laughs> 